Athletics at a place like Michigan, it builds community, it builds spirit, uh, it connects you to something bigger, it is a sense of pride. The connection that coaches have with those student athletes is a bond that exists over, you know, we say four or five years, but even predates that with recruiting. We often say that athletics is just another form of a classroom experience here, uh, that our coaches are actually teaching every day and really guiding and leading and building a student to a, a philosophy of greatness. Leaders and best, that is what people think of when they think of Michigan athletics. And so somebody like Carol Hutchins has built this incredible softball program. She's the winningest coach at Michigan. Carol came to Michigan as a part-time coach, part-time employee. Don Canham asked if she could type and do some secretarial work when she got her first job here as an assistant coach. She came in the early years of varsity women's sports at Michigan. Uh, they just were about to join the NCAA and the Big Ten. And she really built a program that had had some success, but really took it to a whole nother level. She's by now the winningest coach in Michigan history and the winningest coach in women's college uh, softball. She'll tell you time and time again, this isn't about her, this isn't about her, this is about Michigan. But you know, she's worked really hard to get here and that shows with how many wins she has and her perseverance and she's relentless. And I think that a lot of that shows when they held up that banner and she, she became the winningest coach in NCAA history. Hutch is all about the team, so she wasn't about to make that event um, about herself at all. I mean, I knew she knew that it was an awesome accomplishment, just like we all did, and I was so honored to be on the field for that win. I don't really spend too much time focusing on it. I, um, my goal is just to win every game and win the game we're playing. And really, um, the biggest impact I have are my student athletes who are part of my life forever. And, my alumni who love their experience and are so connected to this program and believe in Michigan and the opportunity they've had here. And, and to me, that's, that's the biggest success we can know. I want to tell you, that's an impressive group. And that's a coach that, you know, players might have been afraid of Bo. I got a feeling that they might be even a little more afraid of her. <laughs> you know, I mean, they don't screw around. She yelled at me every day. And I, went in to, to her office and I said, you know, Hutch, I, I just, you know, I want you to know I really work well on praise and I feel like you're, you're yelling at me in practice all the time and you have these expectations of me. And she looked at me square in the eye and she said, you better start worrying when I don't yell at you. She just cares about her players as more than softball players. And that's one of the biggest lessons she's taught me is that how, how, who I am on the softball field is not who I am off the softball field. She's been a great mentor for me, and I really look to her, you know, when it comes to talking about school, life, softball, anything like that. I think when you're in college, ideally you have a mentor who is going to stick with you for the rest of your life. And so uh, in some cases, it's going to be a coach. And so I think if you are a player on the softball team, um, I suspect Carol Hutchins is going to change your life and it's going to stick with you. The lessons, not, you know, how to snag that uh, grounder or to throw that pitch, but how to be an adult in today's world, how to conduct yourself, how to be a team player. And it's the same thing with the players for Jim Harbaugh or Red Berenson, any of our coaches. That's, that's what they do. That, you know, they're teachers first and foremost, teachers of their sport, but also teachers of character. We're teaching our students how to excel in the most competitive of arenas, athletics, and how to do it always being a student first and uh, making sure that we keep the integrity of the university at, at the forefront. What you can do as a mentor is you can help that individual to grow. You can help that individual to go on and be a productive citizen. And as I've told many people, all of them are my children. And that's what really, what mentoring is really all about. You really want to have people to learn from whatever it is you've learned, what you know, and so on, but then to take that and to go further. And I think that runs through everything. I simply wouldn't be here 
today doing what I do without three mentors, actually. I had a teacher named Bert Hornback, who was a Dickens uh, specialist, who gave me the courage that, sure, you can study English and still be a doctor. Well, then Bert introduced me to a physiologist named Arthur Vander, who was a, a kidney specialist. And I became fascinated with the kidney, and I did research with him. And Art introduced me to a man named Horace Davenport, who was the chair of physiology. Well, Horace was writing a history of the University of Michigan's medical school at the time, and I became his research assistant. Well, now I direct the Center for the History of Medicine at the University of Michigan, I, and I like to think of myself as a pretty good historian. That all happened because of those three men. There are two things and that totally changed my life and changed my career aspirations. And One is Robert Hayden saying to me, did you ever think about being a writer? And the answer was no, but I started thinking about it pretty much from that time on. And then my senior year, my all-time favorite professor, the head of the English department, chair of the English department, Russell Frazier, one of the top Shakespearean scholars in the world, just throwaway line, said, if Shakespeare were alive today, he'd be a screenwriter. And I'm thinking, wow. I think if you go back, again, to Tappan and, and uh, this whole notion of development, this has been what the model is about, that people can develop, that indeed, if they're given the kind of freedom and guidance and so on, that they will develop and do unique kinds of things. And that's something that Hutch says, is she, wa she wants us to leave here, Michigan women. It means being fearless, I think, in whatever you want to do, whatever direction you're going, do it without questioning it and take people under your wing if they need that. You know, don't be afraid to lead people where you're going to if, if you know it's in the right direction. Well, I think that's my reward. You know, all the former players I have who are part of my life, and they've impacted me, and it's my job um, and duty to impact them and help them become better people and strong women. But ultimately, they all impact me greatly. When people show up at Bo's memorial service on a cold Tuesday, in late November, 20,000 people showed up. Not one did to celebrate Bo's national titles. Bo never won a national title. They're there to celebrate his values, what he meant to the program, what he meant to the university. And I kept on looking behind me, I was near the stage, and nobody left for two hours. That was Michigan to me. Made possible by the Stanley and Judith Frankel Family Foundation.